The Hanley Page Hanley was a torpedo bomber that was developed for the Royal Navy in the early 1920s. Like the Blackburn Dart, it came about in that interesting time when the Royal Naval Air Service had ceased to exist, but the fleet air arm had not yet come into being, and so it was technically designed for the Royal Air Force. Built towards specification 3-20, like the Dart, the Hanley was intended to provide the Royal Navy with a replacement for the Sopwith Cuckoo, the Navy's first true carrier-borne torpedo bomber. Though he had little experience designing naval aircraft, being almost solely responsible for kick-starting the British obsession with heavy bombers, and succeeding to such a degree that for many years afterwards, any big bomber was simply known as a Hanley Page, Frederick Hanley Page believed that this torpedo bomber was the perfect example to make use of his newly developed high-lift leading-edge slat system. These allowed the wing to function at a higher angle of attack before it stalled, allowing an aircraft to maintain control at significantly slower speeds. This would be considerably important for a carrier-borne torpedo bomber, as not only would it allow for more control during takeoff and landing, but it would also help during a torpedo attack run, which, at the time, were conducted at speeds not much faster than that of continental drift. With this in mind, Hanley Page directed his chief designer, George Volkert, to prepare a design submission. This began as the Hanley Page Type T, but soon became more commonly known as the HP-19. The design was submitted in late summer of 1920, and the Air Ministry signed a contract for the production of three prototype aircraft for evaluation. Before the design was finalised, Volkert would leave to join the British Air Mission to Japan, where he would help to design several Japanese aircraft, some of which have already been featured on this channel. In his place, S.T.A. Richards took over as chief designer and oversaw the completion of the prototypes, all three being complete by December of 1921. Initially, all three of these aircraft were identical. They had a wingspan of 46 feet, a length of 33 feet 4 inches, and a loaded weight, including the torpedo, of 6,444 pounds, which was fairly light. Power would come from a Napier Lion 3B, a water-cooled V12, which produced 450 horsepower and drove a two-blade wooden propeller. Unlike the Blackburn Swift, which was the precursor to the Dart, this design didn't feature any structural innovations, like the centralised frame that connected the wings, fuselage and undercarriage of the Swift. The HP-19 used traditional methods of construction, being built with a frame of spruce covered in doped fabric. It was completed as a three-bay biplane with wings that folded in from a pivot point just outboard of the inner interplane struts, and the only real innovations were the use of leading-edge slats on the wings and a divided undercarriage for the torpedo. The first prototype, now named the Hanley Page Hanley, made its maiden flight on the 3rd of January 1922, followed shortly thereafter by prototypes 2 and 3. Following initial flight trials, the first prototype was sent over to Martlesham Heath for a formal evaluation on the 11th of March. Unfortunately for Hanley Page, the Blackburn Swift had been completed first, and the Air Ministry had already placed a production order for the type as the Blackburn Dart three days before his prototypes arrived for assessment. Nevertheless, the Hanley was still assessed against the Blackburn on the off chance that it too was a good performer and might serve as a useful backup in case things went wrong with the Blackburn in the future. As it turned out, the assessors would be confirmed in their choice of the Blackburn Swift, as not only was the Hanley inferior, but it was also damned unlucky. The first prototype suffered a hard landing in April, which damaged its undercarriage and lower wing, and the second had been extensively damaged before even making it to Mardlesham Heath in the first place, having completed a spectacular and damaging somersault when landing at Hanley Pages Field at Crinklewood. This left just the third prototype to complete the trials, and by the end the results were not looking good. The Hanley's controls were deemed to be poorly harmonised, it had a disappointing top speed of just 97 miles per hour at 3000 feet, and the low speed handling assessment had produced some deeply embarrassing results. This wasn't because the leading edge slats did not work, indeed they allowed the Hanley to land at a remarkably low speed, 
but the cockpit was in such an awkward location that the pilot could barely see the ground as it was approaching. Oddly enough, having about 10 foot of plane in front of you, and a thick lower wing obscuring your lower front quarter, made it hard to see said approaching ground. This, combined with the poor control authority, made the prospect of testing the Hanley aboard the deck of an aircraft carrier most distressing for naval service pilots. And indeed, it appears this was never attempted with the third prototype in its original configuration. Following this embarrassing performance, the first prototype was modified during its repairs. Renamed as the Hanley Mark II, it had reshaped wingtips, improved leading edge slats, balanced control surfaces, a simplified undercarriage, and some other minor cosmetic changes. Performance did improve, with a new top speed of 115 miles per hour, but its handling was still considered poor. And while the wing slats were effective, they forced the Hanley to adopt a high angle of attack during landing. During testing aboard HMS Argus, this resulted in some heart-stopping near misses, as the pilots were struggling to judge their forward and vertical momentum relative to the carrier, and a couple almost splatted themselves straight against the Argus's stern. By this point, it was mid-1923, and any hopes for the Hanley to receive a production order were more or less dead. Due to a shortage of work, Hanley Page sent the second prototype, plus a fourth airframe built for the purpose, to the Soviet Union, who were exploring the idea of purchasing torpedo bombers. This saw company foreman William McRosty tag along as a liaison, and as he knew no Russian, and the Russian pilots knew no English, he was forced to communicate with various gestures. His time in Soviet Russia was not pleasant mostly because he was forced to lie prone in a hollow section in front of the cockpit of the Hanley during test flights, as it was a single-seater, slowly freezing to death, as it was February, and making observations about the accuracy of the pilots during various torpedo runs, as they had no ground observers. Eventually, he escaped this frigid existence and made his way back to England via an illegal smuggling route through Sweden. The remaining two Hanleys would spend the rest of their days as testing airframes, mostly for the development of various types of leading edge slats. But the design was not completely dead, as it would be modified into the Hanley Page Hendon, which was a two-seat variant of the Hanley. It too was not particularly successful, as only about six were built, and it will be a topic for another day if people are interested. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And a big thank you, of course, to the Patreon supporters. I've put a little update up on Patreon, letting you all know the major video plans for this month. All but one are done, and hopefully the last one will be ready in time. Time and my brain permitting. They're all quite long, and hopefully they'll be equally as interesting. A big thank you, of course, to our Wing Commander tier patrons, our highest tier members. In about another week, I'll be putting up the next series of video votes up on Patreon. I'm just finalising what options I want to put up for the next few months, and that will dictate the next series of special videos you'll see over the winter. Well, summer for most of you as you're all in the Northern Hemisphere. But anyway, thank you all so much for your continued support, and I will catch you all next time. Goodbye.